Somebody reached out to me after having seen one of my previous films and asked the question, what was Mr. Douglas's involvement in the recruitment of black troops during the American Civil War? And do I understand correctly that one of his sons participated in a war? Well, that's a very good question for two reasons. Number one, it gives me the opportunity to talk a bit more about Mr. Douglas' Civil War involvement. And number two, it shows that someone has been watching my films. <laughs> There's a question that comes up. Wait, something ain't right. Oh, yes. Now, where was I? There's a question that comes up in every American Civil War class, and that question is, was the Civil War fought over the issue of slavery? My answer to that question is, it depends on who you asked. In the summer of 1861, Congress said that the war was only about keeping the Union together. Some whites in New York started rioting in New York over the issue. Some stated that they would fight to protect the Union, but they would be doggone if they were going to fight the free Negroes. Non-slaveholding Southern whites said it was about protecting their way of life. I'm thinking, more like protecting the right to claim ownership over someone else? Please, let's just be honest about the real intent. But it was very clear in the mind of Mr. Douglas and many other abolitionists that this war was about slavery. Mr. Douglas accused the government of not being serious about winning the war. He was like, you guys keep messing around with these people. You fixing to get knocked the heck, uh, knocked out. I mean, it's not exactly what he said, but that's pretty much how he was feeling. He accused Mr. Lincoln of fighting this war with his soft white hand while keeping the iron black fist tied behind his back. He told the president on his second visit, sir, if you really want to win this war, you got an untapped source that can help you do it. Mr. Douglas said, once let the black man get upon his person the brass letters US. Let him get an eagle on his button and a musket on his shoulder and bullets in his pocket. There is no power on earth that can deny he has earned the right to citizenship. Mr. Douglas was very influential in recruiting troops for both the 54th and 55th Massachusetts. Amongst the first 23 individuals he recruited, two of them were his sons, Lewis and Charles Douglas. Frederick Jr was down in the Mississippi region recruiting black troops. At some point, Charles joined the 5th Massachusetts Colored Cavalry. Lewis fought at the Battle of Fort Wagner, July 18, 1863. The unit lost about 45% of his manpower in the attack. Lewis was severely wounded, and while recovering, he got an infection. Shortly after that, he was discharged. All three sons survived the war. Mr. Douglas had spoken to Secretary of War Edwin Stanton and he believed that he was going to get a commission which was not out of the realm of possibility. Generally, if you raised a regiment of 1,000 individuals, you would be commander of it. Mr. Douglas did receive his orders to go down south, but his commission never came. It was like, uh, just go on down there and, and report for duty and we'll uh, send the com commission later. Mr. Douglas was not about to go down south without any rank. He didn't think that story was going to end too well. And even after they allowed black troops to fight, they didn't want to pay them the same rate. They paid white troops. Not paying people the same wage to do the same job? I'm glad we don't have that problem anymore. There are two lessons that we can glean from this story. First, you can find a lot out about a person's character when money is on the table. They can say what they want, but money has a way of revealing what's really in their heart. Second, there is no greater expression of love than when someone is willing to lay their life down for someone else. Black troops proved that they were willing to fight and die for the country. And that was for a hopeful promise to their children. 
It was because of the efforts of black service personnel during the American Civil War that the U.S. military finally authorized the use of black troops, although on a segregated basis. And that would last until 1948, 83 years later. Mr. Douglas recruiting black troops to help preserve the Union was just another episode in his life that attests to his being one of the greatest leaders in the 19th century.